Hey everybody, I wanted to take a minute and check in with you because I am very concerned about this decision by the United States Supreme Court regarding this uh, case that involves gun control in New York. I'm not sure if you've been following it. Uh, I recognize with the coronavirus, it's that's consuming everybody's attention. But the Supreme Court had agreed to hear this case and it has to do with uh, the ability to carry a firearm from one location to the other. And New York had basically passed this law that said, you can only carry your licensed handgun from your home to the gun range. There's no other legal area or place where you could carry that gun to. So, uh, for example, if you had a second home and you wanted to take your gun to that second home, you couldn't do it under this law. So the Supreme Court had agreed to hear it. This would have been the first time that we had heard from the Supreme Court in about 10 years about gun legislation. And it would have been important with the new makeup of the Supreme Court. A lot of us gun rights advocates were very excited to hear a new decision uh, that would support gun rights from the Supreme Court. Well, so what happened is New York heard that the Supreme Court was going to uh, take the case, so to speak. So New York changed the law and they changed it to say, OK, you can take it to a second home or or other places. And so the Supreme Court's decision was, well, since the law changed, we're not going to decide on the issue. And part of me understands why they want to send it back to the lower courts. But again, I was very hopeful that this would be heard so that we can get some clarity on gun rights from this particular Supreme Court. And I was also very hopeful that it would be heard because this type of legislation is one of the reasons why I want to go to Washington and to fight. Because it's the type of legislation that is based upon the worst kind of logic. It's based upon pure emotion. And this is something that we have to fight. I mean, I want you to understand what they're saying here. They believe in New York City that if you pass a law that says you can't carry a firearm from, from one location to the other, they honestly believe that the drug dealers and the gang members and, and everybody else who is going to carry a gun illegally, they honestly believe that those people are going to go, oh, you mean I can't carry my gun around with me anymore? Oh, man, I wish, oh, shoot, darn, they got me. I guess I'll have to follow the law. This, this idea is so ridiculous. My friends, we said this all the time when I was hosting on KSL. Laws are for the law abiding. It's already against the law to murder somebody. It's already against the law to shoot somebody. We, we don't need to continually add more and more restrictions on top of this because the only people that it affects are the law abiding. And you're making it harder and harder for the average American to protect themselves. But no potential criminal is going to follow this law. This is pure emotion. It's one of the things that bothers me the most about the type of legislation that we see often that comes from the left. Oh, if we just pass a law, everything will be great. No, it won't be great. You're going to punish the law abiding. You're going to take away their constitutional rights. And meanwhile, those who would break the law anyway, you've empowered them. Because now there are fewer people out there who have the ability to defend themselves. And they're going to conceal, and they're going to carry, and they're going to break the law. That's what they do. So, my friends, I just, I just want to put this on your radar. Uh, let's hope that the Supreme Court takes up uh, a, another case here soon where we can get some clarity on this. And let's, let's remind everybody that laws are for the law abiding, and that more often than not, Laws like this punish the law abiding. And again, it's one of the reasons why I believe that I can make a difference in Congress and fight for your Second Amendment rights.
because this type of illogical, emotional legislation happens all of the time. And somebody needs to be able to articulate it and to point it out. I believe I'm that guy. So please, with your support, uh, help me go to Washington and fight for these Second Amendment rights. Obviously, you can help me with your vote in the primary. You can help me by sharing this video on your social media. And you can help me the most by making a donation to our campaign. Go to our website, jmacforutah.com, and click on the donation page. I would love it if you could consider making a monthly donation. Join our Keystone Club and commit to donating $25 a month, $50 a month, whatever you can do. Uh, we uh, need your support financially so that we can help get the word out and we can help fight for your Second Amendment rights and keep these emotional arguments out of the debate and out of this, this discussion. So again, go to the website, jmacforutah.com, and stay safe, everybody. You can tell I'm at home uh, doing the social distancing thing. So I, a, uh, I'm just going to keep doing my part, and I hope that you're doing well. And with that, I'll let you go and get back to your day. Thank you.